Hey everyone, and welcome back. Well, it's time for another review of one of those cheap trimmer attachments you often see bandied around on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and the like. You might remember my previous videos where I had a bit of a hard time getting the steel wire brush attachment to mount up onto my machines and uh, then do a, a not so good job at all the tasks that the advertisement claimed it would do. Well, today we're looking at the six teeth grass trimmer brush cutter head. Having a quick look on Google, we can see that these things sell anywhere from around $7 on Wish right up to this version on a site called Rabbit Quick, something I'd never heard of before, which comes in at a comparatively hefty $51. This is Australian. Anyway, I purchase a lot of things on eBay, so the version I found came from an Australian seller for $14. It arrived in about a week. Looking at the packaging here, and it's relatively straightforward and easy to get out. None of that hateful blister packaging, and here it is. If you're wondering what it says on the box, well, let's have a look. Now, I guess mowing was probably the better translation, but the wrong one, well, seeing how fast these things spin, hopefully it wasn't a look into the future. The blade itself seemed okay, a little light, the steel may be a bit thin, and I do have a few questions about the strength of the rivets they've used to attach the blades, as you really wouldn't want these things shearing off and taking flight. The blades themselves are sharpened on both sides, which presumably means you could potentially turn the blade over and use it when the uh, other way when one side is finished. So it was time to mount it up, and this is where the wire brush trimmer fell down, not mounting at all well up to my Ryobi trimmer. Well, today I've got myself an upgrade, a still, and if we look through the listing, we can see that with a mounting hole diameter of roughly 25mm, it should mount up as claimed to the still. First, I removed the Australian-made weed whacker attachment I'd put on here previously. Let me know if you'd like a review of that. And now it was time to put the new product on. Well, it wasn't quite right at first. I couldn't get it to sit and stay. To be seated, the mounting hole needs to sit over this washer, and I couldn't get it to line up. The blade wanted to walk all over the place, and I knew this wouldn't work without hideous vibration. At first, I thought that the mounting hole was just a little too small, so I started enlarging it with the Dremel, but then I realized that wasn't the problem at all. The inherent design flaw is that the mounting hole sits in a cupped out portion of the head, which is just a little too small for the still mounting surface to sit inside of. Compare it with the weed whacker, which sits flush. On the new head, it means that the washer, which is supposed to mount through the hole, can only just creep into it, and it's really hard to get it to sit there whilst you put the rest of it back together. Now, I knew that when the pressure plate was fitted and screwed down, it should distort the somewhat thin steel of this head enough to allow the washer to go a little further through and seat it tightly. But the difficulty was in keeping it in the right spot until I had things screwed down. I came up with the idea of building up one side of the head around the hole with some tape, just to give that washer a bit more purchase at first. Here it goes, and you can see I put the Dremel back to use. So it's a bit of another home hack job, but I think I've finally got it mounted up and torqued down. Let's get outside, spin it up and see how it goes. Ah, 
Okay, so we're spinning. It looks okay. A little bit of vibration, but I think that's all within spec we can manage. So, what to test this on? Well, what does the ad say it can do? Looking through, we see images of grass, brush, and some interesting safety gear. So, unlike the wire brush attachment, where the ad claimed it could do everything, this product at least targets itself at the user that has a bit more to do than your average suburban backyard. First up was this clump of grass. I later realised this was here because it had grown through a piece of old carpet. I wasn't too happy about hitting the fence here either, but it's all a learning process. This went okay, nothing fell apart, we keep going. Next up was a strip of pasture-like grass and weeds. To be honest, it just ate this stuff up. So, now a little more of a challenge. Up until now we would have got by with string, but uh, now I went to cut into some shrubby weeds that were growing on this sloped terrain. The string wouldn't really last on this. Now once again, the head had no troubles. It was also relatively easy to clear the felled weeds to one side. I must admit, it's looking good. So now I decided to turn it up. One of the toughest weeds we face in Australia is lantana. The introduced pest species is bred by birds and is toxic to most animals. It grows as a dense shrub and features thick woody stems which can be quite difficult and time consuming to cut through with traditional star blades. I have some growing down the back, so let's put the cheap head to the test. Now, if I'm honest, for $14, there's not much to complain about here. The head dispatched the smaller stems on the swing, and with some focus, the larger ones could be cut through with relative ease, and then removed by hand. Now look, it's still going to take some time to mulch all of this up, but short of owning a hydraulic flail mulcher or a bobcat, you're in for the long on this with anything. Lastly, I cut my way up the side of this hill and I'd had enough. So let's inspect the blade after maybe half an hour's use. Apart from the paint coming off, it still looks good. The edges are sharp. You may notice that the blades have some damage to the faces, but oddly enough, these are on the trailing edges. I think they might be damaging themselves when they swing back into the carrier, which 
may mean that uh, attempting to turn it over and use the other side may not be a straightforward process without a bit of sharpening. Now basically this product passes the major tests out of the box. It can be, as I showed, a bit of a bear to fit, but once on, performs well. The question is, how long does it last? Well, I'll keep using it for some time, I'll put it away wet, like pretty well we all do, and I'll see how it goes. The three failure points I can see, the blades dulling, one of the rivets that, holding them, uh, that holds them shearing off, or the whole thing probably rusting out. So time will tell, and I'll get back to you in a few months. Leave a comment below. Do you have any experience with these things and uh, know how long they last? Well, let's see. But anyway, thanks for watching.